I'm gonna be creating four landscape paintings using paints that are from different time periods and price points. I have a cheap and expensive palette from both 2023 and 1950, and I'm gonna compare them based on a variety of factors that I have laid out. So here's what I'll be working with today. For the 2023's cheap side, I'll be going with a mix of Gamblin's 1980 line and Windsor & Newton's Winton line, which are each valued at around five to $6 each. On the expensive side, I bought a set of Williamsburg handmade artist paint, which can cost 12 to $16 per tube. For 1950s cheap side, we got Liquitex and Biddy and Smith's Artist Oil Color. Yes, Liquitex used to make oil paint for a while, which I found online for $6 a pop back in the day, which is around $75 in today's money. One tube for $75. And that wasn't even the expensive side. For that one, I got these OG Windsor & Newton oil paints, which are valued at $11 a pop on the low side, which is about $137 adjusted for inflation in today's money. We're painting with gold today, ladies, gentlemen, and NBs, so let's get started. As for subject matter, I'm painting something that I very rarely do, landscapes. Capturing nature has been a continuous theme over the ages, so I am choosing a couple of photos that I think embody both modern architecture and some antiquated structures. I'm gonna rank each of our palettes out of five on five different parameters. Viscosity, we want nice buttery paint, no question there. Pigmentation, I'll consider both power and overall vibrancy for this one. Worthiness of the price, I'm a cheapskate, so don't get your hopes up, fella. Overall experience, did I have fun painting this? And rating the actual painting that I create, I'm gonna critique myself at the very end. Great, so we're starting off with the cheap paint from 2023, and I've used these a fair bit if you couldn't tell by the teeth marks. I think it's also important to note that I will only be giving myself one hour with each of these paints because I think that'll give each of them a chance in kind of the most even playing field. So, starting now, okay. Like I mentioned before, I've used these paints a fair bit and I'm pretty familiar with them, so this will be the most boring out of all the paints that I use today. One thing I do want to mention is that I'm not using a blue as I couldn't find it for the oldest paints, so all the skies are going to look a little bit rainy, but using no blue is like not unusual because if you've ever seen the Zorn palette or a Zorn painting, Anders uses the same black as I am, the ivory black, uh, to get cool colors, but I'm not sure if it works for landscapes. We'll leave it there. I'm very happy with this. The paint, it was a little thicker because they add a lot more linseed oil or whatever oil binder instead of the pigment. But it also helps with, you know, laying down some of those thicker parts, uh, the impasto parts around the painting. So yeah. For viscosity, I'm giving it a two out of five. The 1980s are really not fun. They're terrible, honestly. The Winston's are a little bit better, but just nothing, nothing too, too fancy. Pigmentation, I'm giving it a four out of five. Standard for today's paint, nothing too weak. Worthiness of the price, I'm giving it a 3.5 because even for that cheap price, you end up using more. So it's going to be like more expensive than the paint that you would have bought if you just bought the expensive one. So overall experience, a 2.5 out of 5. I just didn't really have fun. It wasn't great. It wasn't a terrible experience. So, you know, right in the middle. And then rating the actual painting that I create, I think this is a 3.5 out of 5. And overall, I give this one a 15 out of 25. Okay, okay, okay. Painting number two. I've never used this paint, so I'm very excited. These are some of the most pigmented and expensive colors that I've ever used. If you couldn't tell already, I was definitely having a lot more fun using these paints than the, the previous ones. I realized I didn't have a timer, but there we go. Dude, this paint is so freaking nice. What have I been doing my whole life? It's just so silky and like, oh, I can't even describe it. I think it's important to note that I did not pay for these. Uh, I, I applied for a grant a little while ago that is basically for materials and I specifically wanted expensive paint because this is kind of what the, the masters used back in the day. So that's how I got it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, wealthy enough to afford $300 for a bunch of these paints. Viscosity, five out of five. This one is prime. The perfect buttery consistency, no complaints about that. Pigmentation, I give it a 4.5 out of 5. You know, it's very pigmented and bright, nothing too overpowering, but it's not the best out of all of these. Worthiness of the price, 4 out of 5, still a little high for this paint. And if you're looking for a set, it's going to be over $100. So, you know, choose your battles. Overall experience of 4 out of 5, I had a lot of fun, but there was just too much paint left over because it was, you know, super pigmented. So that was annoying. Reading the actual painting that I create, I give this one a 4 out of 5. So overall, that is 21.5 out of 25. If you've ever used a canvas like this, could you tell me what I'm doing? I, I have no clue. Am I supposed to just like just scrape it off like a normal glass palette? Please let me know if you know. All right, we're back. All right, let's start this timer. By the way, my name is Christian Baches and I'm an artist based in New York City, New York. And if you're enjoying this video or art videos in general, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to upload weekly, so I have a lot of content coming your way. So, yeah. One thing that I did want to say was that 
A big difference to me is the consistency differences. I feel like nowadays the colors pretty much feel all the same. But back then, like some of these colors are so like, like hard and then others are so like, just like buttery and soft. Some differences that I noticed. One thing that I learned in this video is that I love painting landscapes. There's just something so fun about sitting down and just painting like a, just some sort of scene um, and not having so many restrictions because, you know, it's not a face. It doesn't have to look perfect. So I definitely see myself continuing to do these and I really want to do one of these outside. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll make a video like that going to actually like Washington Square Park and sitting down and, and painting one of these. I think I'm done with this piece. We have 22 minutes left. All right, that's cool. Um, yeah, I don't want to like overwork this, but I'm pretty happy with it. This paint is just great. I have no complaints about it. Actually, I do have a very big complaint about it. It smells terrible. Yeah, cool. We'll call it there. Viscosity, I give it a five out of five. It's also very, very nice compared to the last one. Pigmentation, I give this one a five out of five. It is so very, very pigmented. It's probably more than it is now, honestly. Worthiness of the price, I give it a 3.5 out of five. You know, honestly, this is a little bit still pricier for back in the day. I wouldn't have really recommended it or bought it. Overall experience, I give it a four out of five. Green was annoying to use because it was just so strong. And I was also scared for my life when using these because of the heavy metals, but it was fun nonetheless. Rating the actual painting I create, I give this one a 3.5 out of five. And overall, this is a 21 out of 25. paint that we've all been waiting for, the oldest one. I just want to start off by saying I am going to cheat because I could not find white paint for the life of me, so I'm just going to use the Liquitex just for the whites. Hopefully it won't be too much of an issue. I'm still going to judge the paint pretty much basically. Hey, look at this. So it's definitely like rough. A little glass, some sort of hair. I don't know what this is. As you can tell, this paint was in pretty rough shape. It was in a box in a home that was like untouched for a couple decades, so it had not seen light in a while. And I'm still not sure what that corroded material that had built up kind of around the cap is, but the paint on the inside still seems squishy and new. There is one thing that I'm noticing that is so annoying and that I'm not used to. Some of these pigments are so much stronger than other ones. So this green, I don't know if you see, but I've been trying to mix it into a lighter color for so long, but it's just such a strong color that like, it's so difficult to do that. But then like the coverage isn't good. So then I have to keep remixing it and it's annoying. But yeah, another observation. I also wanted to mention that you can purchase these paintings for only $75 each free shipping on my website right now. I used to love watching art YouTube videos and then buying the art that I saw as a way to have this piece of that video in my home forever. So that's what I'm doing here. Check it out if you're interested or especially drawn to one piece or another. I'm ending it early. I'm done with this. I hate this paint. So yeah, let's go to the wrap up part of this. So the big question is, can the last one beat out the rest? My ratings for these are viscosity, two out of five. This was so difficult to mix and blend and get the right color. It wasn't fun. Pigmentation, 2.5 out of five. Some of these were stronger than others. There was a lot of bleeding and nothing was more impressive than the Liquitex, honestly. Worthiness of the price, zero out of five. This was way too expensive for anyone to use it for this quality of paint. This is like 1980, the, the 1980 paint that I have. Overall experience, one out of five. I did not have fun. I was fumbling with the mixing. Some paints were tougher than Evers, bleh. And rating the actual painting, five out of five. Surprisingly, this is one of my favorites. Maybe because I just kept working with it. But overall, I would give it 11 out of five. Booty.